heart problems again. This week, two of my best friends had a medical event that required a pacemaker insertion. These two people did not watch Tech for Senior and were not wearing a smartwatch. Unfortunately, this led to a rather unfavorable event. Let me discuss this and how I can help. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we make videos to help seniors understand technology and also help you with your health as well. Today, I'm going to take off my regular shirt and put on my doctor's cape that I wore for about 35 years, helping people through their difficult times in life. Uh, but since I retired, a new technology has come along, and that is the smartwatch. This is an important device that can really help seniors avoid complications. Now, the first individual is a longtime friend of mine. He's a retired dentist and lives in Nebraska. Yes, I've been to Nebraska many times. There's a lot of very nice people there, and I have some great memories of Nebraska. So my my friend decided to paint the side of his house and he went up on some scaffolding and was painting the side of his house when he didn't feel so well. He felt a little dizzy and got down off the scaffolding and thought he should uh, leave it for another day. He discussed it with his wife. She came out and helped him move some of the scaffolding over so when he came back and started painting again, it would be in the right position. But unfortunately, the last moment he went up the ladder and had another spell, whatever this was, and fell off the ladder. And the first thing he remembers is waking up in intensive care unit where he had a pacemaker inserted and two fractured feet and a back injury. So what happened? Well, he, his heart became very slow. He lost consciousness fell off the ladder, landed on his feet, broke, unfortunately broke, broke both his feet and ended up in the hospital. Unfortunately, this is going to be a long recovery for him because of course he has fractures and bones in his feet, in his feet that don't heal very well. And also he has a back injury and on a very unhappy way to spend your retirement years. The second, the second individual was a friend of mine that lives locally here. She was on a walk with her husband and ended up back at the car. But before she got in, she collapsed and fell to the ground. She had no chest pain. And after the investigations were done, she ended up with a pacemaker in the hospital. Both, both of my friends within one week. And unfortunately, this could have been prevented. And if they had watched one of the night, if they had watched one of the 19 videos I've made, about smartwatches and your pulse, atrial fibrillation, and pacemakers. So let's go over this one more time. So when you reach the age of 60, there's two conditions that sort of start to appear in your health. And the first is a situation where your heart slows down. It doesn't keep up the speed it needs to provide blood and oxygen to the brain. And it gets slower and slower and slower and then you lose consciousness and so we have to speed the heart up and we do that by putting a pacemaker in which is an electrical stimulation to keep the heart going the second condition is where the heart speeds up too fast and one of the types of this can be atrial fibrillation and the problem with atrial fibrillation is you often don't know that you have it and the major side effect of this is stroke. The other issue that's a big factor here is that as you get older, as you get older from 60, the incidence of this goes up exponentially, not linearly, but exponentially, which means the older you get, the more common this is going to be in a big way. So if you want to protect yourself against this, then I think that the smartwatch and the monitoring your pulse is a very good idea. Let's look at two friends. Let's look at my friend from Nebraska. He's now going to have a very long recovery. He's got broken feet. I, I've seen this personally where this doesn't heal up very well and he could have chronic pain in his feet and his back. Not a great way to be in retirement, but this is a totally preventable thing. 
this wasn't the first time this happened, I'm sure, and it would have been picked up had he been monitoring his pulse with a smartwatch. Now let's let's uh, say my other friend that lives here had got in the car and driven home. She could have passed out in the car and a big disaster would have happened. So we have to be careful as we get to be seniors. We want to pick this up because these are conditions that are very treatable and it requires you to monitor your pulse. So on the back of these, on the back of these watches, there are sensors and the sensor can measure your pulse and it measures it very accurately. Now there are some watches that are not so smart and they just measure your maximum and minimum pulse and that's fine. Or there's smarter watches that actually communicate with your cell phone and can actually do a lot more. But the goal here is that I'd like you to know if your pulse is going too fast or too slow. So you should have a watch that you wear that will notify you if indeed it's going too fast or too slow. It's simple. Even a $15 watch will do that in a lot of cases. Uh, now, what you do is you want to set up in the watch, you want to set up a maximum heartbeat. And let's say it's 140. You put that in there. And what will happen is, is the watch will bleep or give you some sort of notification if your heart is going over 140. Now, on this, some smart watches communicate with your smartphone and will send you notification and do more advanced monitoring. But what you need to know is if your watch heart is going over 140. The same happens with, with your pulse. The, you should set the minimum pulse on your watch at around 60. Now, this varies for each individual because some of the medications we use, particularly for blood pressure, like beta blockers, will slow your heart rate down. So sometimes you need a little bit of information from your physicians to help you figure out what the minimum is, but I would set it at 60 uh, to start with so that it would send you a notification if your heart goes below 60. I am sure both these people we just talked about, had they been wearing any sort of watch that monitored their pulse, they would have had events before where their heart rate dipped down to let's say 40. Usually it's around 40 when you lose consciousness. And so they would have been able to go in and get help before these disasters occurred. So measuring the pulse with your smartwatch is so important. And this should be a critical decision process in purchasing a watch because you want to be able to track your pulse and notify you high or low. Now, it was very interesting after this happened, I went and checked my wife's older Fitbit and she actually has the atrial, oh, did I, we're gonna talk about atrial fibrillation in a minute. She has the atrial fibrillation monitor but her old Fitbit doesn't have the high, low pulse notification, which is really critical. So that is something you want to make sure that if you are purchasing a device to wear on your wrist, that it has this high, low pulse notification. It's very easy to do. You don't need to spend a lot of money on your, uh, on your watch for this to happen. It's just, it monitors it all the time and will tell you high or low. One of the big changes that has occurred in the past five years is the ability of your smartwatch to detect atrial fibrillation. This is a condition where your heart speeds up too fast. If it went up over 140 and you were in atrial fibrillation, if you had one of the cheaper smartwatches, it would just say your heart is going too fast. So with the changes that have occurred over the past five years, we now had some very accurate, sophisticated tracking that the more expensive smartwatches will do to identify atrial fibrillation, tell the doctor how long you've been in atrial fibrillation, and what are some of the aggravating and relieving factors for this. It's, it's amazing what this does. And I've made a lot of videos about this, so I'm not going to go over that today. I'll leave the link below for a lot of the videos I've made that more specifically discusses this. But this is something we did not have when I was practicing medicine. This is really a game changer, particularly for seniors, because who wants a stroke, right? So today I want to talk about Fitbit for a moment, and I want to show you how to turn on the atrial fibrillation feature 
and the maximum and minimum heart rate detection. Now, the incredible thing about Fitbit was when they brought out their software for atrial fibrillation detection and they applied it, it went to all the models, including a lot of the real older models. It had always been there. The sensor was always there to detect this, uh, this arrhythmia. And it's it's pretty cool because it just it it's pretty cool because it's available now to a lot of the older Fitbit watches that you probably don't even know that you have it on your watch. And I'm going to show you today how to turn that on in the software because the software has changed a bit with their recent update. Also, it's very important that you have the feature that has the minimum and maximum heartbeat where it's going to notify you that, about that. Now, not all Fitbit watches have that. I was surprised at that, but not all do. So if you are purchasing one, you want to make sure it has that feature. So let me show you how to turn these on in your Fitbit smartwatch. So I'm now going to show you how the high and low heart rate notification and the atrial fibrillation notification is turned on in the Fitbit app. Today, we're looking at my Pixel 6. Android phone. And the first thing you need to know is that the Fitbit app on your phone is connected to your smartwatch through Bluetooth. So the first thing that's important is that we make sure that you have the latest and updated Fitbit app. It changed recently and there's been a bunch of changes in the design of it. So I want to just show you where to find things. So let's go to the Play Store. And what we're going to do is I'm going to type up here Fitbit. And here we go. And what you're going to see here on the screen is it shows that Fitbit LLC is uh, installed on, actually on all my devices. And it's up to date because if I click that button, it says open. Uh, if, it, if it was out of date, then it would say install update. So this is where you want to go to make absolutely sure that you have the correct and updated software for your phone. So now let's go to the Fitbit app. I'm going to close that and we're going to come down here and we're going to open the Fitbit app in my on my phone. We click this and you'll see that uh, this is the new graphic design that they have. But this isn't where you set up your heart rate limit, your heart rate notification. So let's come up to the top right. We're going to click on the settings menu and that's going to bring up this list. And as we go down the list, the first thing at the top is activity and wellness. Let's connect with that. And now what you see is um, a bunch of options. And what we're going to do is go to heart settings. And here's where we have the two options I've been talking about. There's the high, low heart rate uh, notification and also the irregular rhythm, which is the atrial fibrillation one. So let's have a look and see what uh, this is all about. I'm going to click on the top one which is the high-low heart rate notification. So what is important for you to understand that you see a top number and a bottom number. Now get notifications if we detect that your heart rate is outside your high or low heart rate threshold when you appear to be inactive for at least 10 minutes. Uh, now, um, as we come down here, you'll see that um, we have heart rate notification and I have that turned on. This is the high heart rate notification turned on and uh, the, we can come down and we can set it. So when we click on custom, so when we turn custom on, we'll come down to threshold and now we have options for our, for our heart rate and I'm going to set mine at 140. Let's go back. And the same as the, I'm not going to go into it in great detail for low heart rate, but it's the same sort of situation. You click custom, okay, and turn it on and we go to threshold and I have my threshold set at 60, but you could certainly set it at any of these other lower ones. You have to use one of the preset that's set on your, uh, in the, in the app. So once this is done, 
you will get a notification um, on your watch and on your phone if your heart rate goes outside those parameters. If it stays in those parameters, it's not going to tell you you're doing good. It's only going to notify you if it goes outside of those parameters. Now, this option uh, is not available on all Fitbit devices. Um, so I think this is clearly an extremely important uh, part of a Fitbit, and I would make sure that the unit I bought had this feature. As I mentioned, it is not on my wife's Fitbit. She has an older one, and I'm soon going to I'm soon to be replacing it. All right, let's come down to a regular um, rhythm, which is here. We're going to click this, and this is. Uh, I'll give you more information in a minute, but this is where you turn the feature on or off, and of course, mine is turned on. The important thing for you to know that in a Fitbit. It's going to sample your heart rate throughout the day, mostly at night, and it's going to identify you if you have atrial fibrillation. And the cool thing about this is, is this feature actually is available for a lot of older models. The sensor in the watches was compatible with this uh, new feature. So it's, it's probably there for you to turn on, and I would encourage you to do so. Now, once you turn it on, let's go back to the original menu here. Let's go way back here. And you're going to come down and you're going to see the first thing here is a regular rhythm notification. And it says it's on and it's checking. So we're going to view history. And here you can see that it uh, last analyzed my heart uh, today, actually at 3.30, which is uh, uh, about an hour ago. And I, and I haven't had any bouts of atrial fibrillation. Now, it also talks a little bit about what atrial fibrillation is. It talks about the basics of atrial fibrillation, uh, why it is challenging to check, and so on and so forth. So this gives you, this is a good resource center for you uh, to, to look and look at all the features here. But the, the, the really big thing I want you to look at is this, this app on your phone with this feature is available for a lot of the older models and you should turn it on this is so important because hey you don't have to go and spend a whole bunch of money it's there it's ron brown with tech for senior hopefully you've enjoyed this video please consider that like and subscribe this is a new technology that will certainly affect the quality of your health as you reach your retirement years remember keep checking that pulse and watch for atrial fibrillation and also subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when we make new videos. And until we see you again, have a great day.